green light. Let's get going. We're on air and live. Uh, let me close down some windows. Let me copy this over onto our website. The website is jollyrogerukulele.com. That's where all the sheet music is posted and all of the schedules and all of the stuff going on in our little world of playing ukulele the hard way uh, is posted. And so run over there and grab your sheet music. Today we are going to be discussing uh, major scales. And so ukulele players get one major scale and baritone players get three major scales. And uh, it'll be fun to cover all those. We'll also revisit last week's uh, discussions. Uh, what should have come out of last week, hopefully, is uh, a little bit of melody playing, a little bit of uh, chord playing, and a whole lot of bar chord making. And I got to get everybody up and running as quickly as possible on all of those issues so that. Um, let me make sure the link's working here uh, so that we can get you on to playing advanced ukulele or advanced more. I, there's no such thing as advanced ukulele, but it, it, it more advanced ukulele than you might be doing otherwise. Close that down. Let me put uh, post this on Twitter real quick. HTTPS colon slash slash uh, Jolly Roger ukulele.com. Wait for that to pop up and on the little little girl rocking out foundations lesson 11 and we hit tweet so this is really it's week two but we're already on lesson 11 right so things can go pretty fast and you should probably feel a tiny bit overwhelmed and we'll of course be working on uh, getting you where you feel come more and more comfortable every time you pick up the ukulele to play and all right so i got the website up and running um, and then uh, let me we'll make sure that I have what we need here. Um, dun, 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 dun. What is this piece of paper called? Ukulele scales. All right, that'll take forever to find it that way. Let's go into storage. Storage. I change. I went ahead and alphabetized everything in storage. That's what I do on weekends. Well, let's make little folders to put everything in. Ukulele, they're not there. Maybe I put them in there. S for scales, storage, download. See, once you rearrange everything, you can't find anything. Not there either. Hmm. What does the top of that say? Oh, I know, it's in the resources. That's where I put it. There they are. Sweet. Okay, so scales. <laughs> now let me find the baritone ones while I'm at it. Um, what do I call those? I call those major scales. Why is I major scales, ukulele, major scales, baritone. Uh, maybe I have two copies in here. I do. Okay, cool. All right, goo groovy, ready to roll. Let's see. Today it is it's twelve oh eight. Let's get going. Sandy's in. Just listening in today. Sandy doesn't need to listen in. She's she's a ridiculously good musician. Mary is in. She's in from Golden Baritone Player. We're having a warm day here in Denver. Overcast. We have some high clouds. Uh, but it looks beautiful out there. Michelle in from Rockaway Beach up in Oregon. Sunny and 50. Perfect day up in Rockaway Beach. Uh, Nancy in from Florida. 77 and Sunday. Also another perfect day down in Florida. Uh, uh, Jan in from Lakewood. Let's see. Oh, beautiful. Is it 72 out there, Jan? It looks, doesn't look quite that warm. That's nice to know. It's going to be a beautiful day. Mary, I like the way you numbered all the pieces and the list and all. It's so nice. Uh, did I number all the pieces? Oh, you mean over on the the, the uh, ukulele and baritone tab, I think. 
I, I'm trying to make it more organized. <laughs> I think the biggest problem we have when we go to learn ukulele in the style that, that we teach here, or that I teach and you learn and we work on, uh, is that it can be very chaotic when you first get started and it's a little haphazard. My, in my head, none of this is haphazard. It's all very sequential, like this is exactly what you need in order to do the next thing. And so, um, so yeah, so that's why it's all numbered. Um, book two still has a ways to go to get all that cleaned up, but I'm adding in all those baritone pieces into book two. When I'm all done with book two, I do like the idea of book two is by thematic ideas, America, French, Ireland, Italian, Mexico, Tin Pan Alley, that sort of thing. I like that idea because in the real world, that's how musicians tend to clump their concerts together. So if I'm a teacher and I'm teaching little kids how to play ukulele, if I could just have them do five songs from Mexico, I would be, you know, it would be great. So I think book two will stay thematic like that. Um, and uh, if you didn't already, at the very top of their... Um, the progress tractor uh, that's lesson seven it looks like let me make sure i know what i'm talking about uh lesson seven has the progress tracker on there where you can write the date that you worked on the song and any notes that you had um and at least at this moment it's pretty close to what's on book on the website <laughs> so hopefully that will help you just sort of go down the list and, and keep yourself um fairly organized once you're done with book one really book two is just getting comfortable with the, the stuff we learn in book one book one is really the meat of the thing so yeah linda welcome in happy monday to you fun monday uh, Melissa has made it made her return. She was out gadding about uh, up in the San Juan Islands and has returned. Glad to have you, Melissa and Vic. Sound is good. Up in sunny Eugene. Oh, wait, wait a minute. Sunny in Eugene and sunny in Rockaway Beach. Wait, it must be springtime in Oregon. Finally. <laughs> Those guys always have the opposite weather. We're going to talk about scales today. But first, grab your Frere Jaca. Okay? Grab your Frere Jaca. Grab your Farrah Jaca, baritone players. You're going to play an A chord um, right there. Bum, ba, da, da, bum, bum, bum. Give us four beats. One, two, three, four. And everybody else, we're going to play 0240, 0240, 457, 457, 797540, 797540. Open, 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 open. Ready? From the top. One, two, ready, play. Baritone players, let's grab yours um, and ukulele players. I'll show you the chords you're going to need to play on ukulele. Baritone players are in the key of E, so you're going to make an E chord. Nice bar here, okay, on four, and then pinky right here on the seventh fret of the first string. That's your key, that's your chord. Four beats per measure, okay, one, two, three, four. I'm going to grab the baritone. I haven't had it tuned up yet today. Let me grab a tuner and make sure we are tuned in. This baritone is desperately in need of new strings. All right. Same thing, baritone players, one, two, two, four, zero, two, four, zero, zero, two, four, zero, and so on. And ukulele players, just the four strums of the E chord. One, Two, ready, play. Now, 
Let's talk about what's really going on here. You're either playing melody or you're playing chords. We're playing a duet together. Unfortunately, I can't hear you, so you have to play at my speed. If we were sitting in a room together, we'd agree on stuff, right? We're going to play at about this speed. You're going to do the chords in a certain way. I'm going to play the melody. Everything's going to work out great. And when we get to the end, it just feels great. You're just like, all right, we are we are so legit. Um, and if the thinking is that we are music is made up of a rhythm a speed at which we're playing it's made up of some chords that's called harmony and it's made up of the melody which is the part we sing right now in this class we do as little singing as possible because you have to listen to me sing and that's not good for anybody but the idea is that the guitar or the ukulele or the piano or the banjo or whatever you're using um, is going to play a melody and then the other person is going to play the harmony you're all working Working at exactly the same speed of play that's the rhythm and um, that's the main stuff music's made up of there are a handful of other elements of music but uh, um, one of those things is timbre like a ukulele sounds quite a bit di even if you play the song exactly the same way on a ukulele and a baritone they sound quite a bit different same thing exact same song on piano exact same song on guitar exact same song on banjo um, all of those instruments give a different timbre overall to it and so that's another word you'll hear once while it's spelled T T I M B R E timber uh, with the R and the E flipped timbre um, and that tells you the quality of the sound that you're making um, and it's different from a piano versus an organ for example um, so this is sort of high level musical thinking but the bottom line is you have melody harmony rhythm um, and those are our big things we can take away harmony and then we just have the straight melody line like if I don't have you guys strum those chords um, you would gen just I'd say all right don't play any chords and I do this in the library classes with kids sometimes don't play and nobody play any chords everybody just play rhythm Frere Jacques, Frere Jacques, right that keeps the beat steady so we could get rid of harmony um, if we get rid of melody then we have rap Frere Jacques, Frere Jacques, Dormez-vous, Dormez-vous, Sonny Le Matina, Sonny Le Matina, Ding Ding Dong, Ding Ding Dong. So you can get rid of melody, right? The one thing that's really challenging is getting rid of rhythm. Frere, Frere Jacques, Frere Jacques, right? We don't rare all, very rarely can you get rid of rhythm, and that's the drum beat, right? And that's the basis of music is. We take poetry, we set it to a drum beat, and suddenly we have music. And then we change the pitch of what we're talking about, and then we have melody. And then once we have rhythm and melody, then there's a certain chords that will work with it and certain chords that will not work with it. So what we're working on is building all of those different pieces of music and plugging them into your noggin so you feel comfortable with the various things that we have to work on. Now, let's grab playing in the C, playing the C scale. In baritone players, you're going to kind of sit out on this one because you are going to end up with three scales and what I want to talk to ukulele players about is we're going to play a C scale and we're going to learn what's important here and baritone players some of this is important for you as well at the top of this piece of paper it says playing the C scale ukulele scales right there's a piano on top and the first thing you that I have some I never had a student say this out loud but they probably think I don't want to learn how to play piano I want to learn how to play ukulele the only reason you have to learn a little bit about piano is that the notes make a whole lot more sense on a piano because there's only one of each type of note on a piano and they're all in a horizontal row <laughs> going right in front of you. So notice on there you see um, that I've written middle C and the next note is a black note, right? And that note is either C sharp or D flat, very confusing. The next note is a white note, it's a D. The next note is another black note. It's either D sharp or E flat, kind of super weird. Uh, and then um, the next note is a white note, and that's F. Okay. The next note is another white note. That's a G. Okay. Now we're going to skip over the black one for just a minute. The next note starts over again at A. So the notes are A through G, and then we start over again with A through G. Um, when we are playing the key in the key of C. Um, we start on the C note and we're going to end up on the C note. So let's go back to middle C. Let's ignore all the black notes for just a moment. C, D, E, F, G. And then it starts over with A up there. Um, 
the A note, well, you could actually write it in on your paper, right? C, D, E, F, G, and then you start over A, B, C. And you'll notice that the C note on the middle C and the middle and the C note further up the fretboard is the first note before the two black notes, right? So you have C and you have two two black notes and then you have all everything else and then you'll have another C further up the piano and and it starts again with the two black notes and so on. Um, so what happens is the notes that make sense together are in a specific pattern. In this case, playing in the key of C, which is we always teach music theory in the key of C to get started with, because it's all the white notes on a piano. So we're going to use C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C to make our C scale. And we're just going to use white notes. We're going to ignore that the black notes are there. Now, I will tell you, and most of you know this, if you go to a piano and you just push the black notes, just play those. Don't touch any of the white notes. Just play black notes. You can't make a mistake. Everything sounds right. Everything goes together. It's absolutely beautiful. There's no way to goof up um, if you only play black notes. You can play them in any order. Whatever you want to do, just play black notes. It will always sound great. Um, that is a pentatonic scale. And so you'll hear some discussion about how important pentatonic scale is in various instruments. Don't overthink it. It's, it's an idea that's kind of interesting. It's not that important. <laughs> um, what you need to know is if I grab a piano and I only play black notes, there's only five notes. That's pentatonic. Penta meaning five. Uh, that's your pentatonic scale. We're going to play a major scale, which is the C major scale. And to do that, we're going to play the middle C and then all of the white keys up to the next C note. Okay. So then sliding down underneath that, you have um, the notes we're actually going to play. Now, I've given you some extra notes on here just so you have a get to help you get oriented up. If you happen to have a low G ukulele instead of a high G, um, you have some extra notes on your ukulele that we don't have on a high G. So you'll have a B and A and a G, which are here at four, uh, two, and zero. You also have a couple of sharps or flats in these other uh, on measure fret one and fret two. Um, so, but so ignore those even if you have a low G, because that's not what we're talking about. Then in the middle there we have the C scale. And then after that, I put on a couple extra notes. So that's a, a D here and an E here. Okay. So for what we're talking about for ukulele players and baritone players, you're going to sit out for just a second because yours are on a different string, obviously, since you're tuned differently. Uh, we're going to play C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Okay. And then I'm going to have you practice while I talk to the G chord, to the baritone players, and then we're going to come back to it. Okay, so grab your C note. It's an open third string. Just hit that. That's middle C, same as on piano. Then we're going to skip this one. That's a black note. And so then we're going to put a two on that same string, the second, the third string, sorry. And now that's a D. Okay. And then you have a D sharp here. Um, and then the next note's an E, but we don't want to play it on this string since we have it open here. So let's play that open E. That's an open second string. And we play a one on the second string, F. Use your ring finger to play a three on that second string, that's a G. Open A string. Two on the first string is a B. And then the new C chord, C note is a uh, ring finger, third fret, first string. Okay, so let's do those together, nice and slow. Ready, play. Zero. Check in with you real quick. Is your posture good? Is this about a 45 degree angle? Is this up against your body? You're not laying it out and trying to look at it, right? Okay, keeping this square against your body. Your thumb is invisible to me and it's hanging out basically right behind wherever your middle finger is. Um, let's do it one more time. And I'm just using my thumb over here on my right hand. Uh, that if it's a and then double checking one other thing if it's a one you're using your index finger if it's a two you're using your middle finger and if it's a three you're using your ring finger that's called playing in first position your index fingers on one okay from the top ready play oh two oh one three Okay, 
do it one last time. Ready? Play. Okay. Now, before I go work with the baritone players, I'm going to give you your, your assignment here. Well, I'm going to, we're going to come back in about five minutes, and we're going to practice, do, do this. I want you, once you get to three, I want you to immediately turn around. Don't hit three twice. Just immediately turn around, and then go right back down the paper. Two, two, oh, three, one, oh, two, oh. So in a minute... Give you, give you a minute to practice. You just mute, mute your, uh, don't mute your, because you're you won't know when it's time. But don't listen to me for a minute while I'm tying the baritones. Your job is to practice. Okay, that's the C scale going up and immediately turning around and coming back down. Okay, all right. Let's play to the C, play up to the high C, turn around and come right back down. Baritone players, let's grab your piece of paper and major scales baritone. You guys get three different ones, okay? So your scale, um, by the way, notice you've got all of the, the I wrote out all of the notes on your uh, keyboard. Uh, good morning, Rob. Welcome in. Running late. <laughs> all right, 75 in North Texas. It sounds beautiful down there. All right. Baritone, you have, if you press the same fret numbers, yours comes out in the key of G. So let's do that. So start at your low note, which is a G on, that's the third string, open, and then a two, and then an open, and then a one, and then a three, open, two, three, turn right around and hit the two, hit the zero, hit the three, hit the one, Hit the open, hit the two, hit the open. Let's do it again. Ready, play. That's your G scale. Now, look down below. Um, you guys also get a D scale because you have a low string. All of you have the same low string here. So now you're going to play a zero. And then you're going to play a two. Four is with your pinky. Make sure, make sure, make sure. When you see a four, you play it with your pinky. And a zero. And a two. Zero. And a two. And hit a three. Turn right around, come back. Two. Oh. Two. Finally, when the ukulele players are playing their C scale, you're going to play your C scale, but your fingering is different. So let's talk about your fingering. Your C scale starts here, one on the second string, then a three, then a zero, then a one, then a three. Now you have a problem because you're going to go five, seven, eight. So you slide. You see that C, V up above the A note there? That means put a put, go to the fifth position. Okay? It really means put a bar on five, but you don't need to put the bar on. Okay? Five. Pinky or ring finger on seven. Pinky on eight. Turn right around. Come back. Seven. Five. Slide into first position. Three. One. Ukulele players, join me now. Ukulele players, you're going to play a C scale. Baritone players, you're going to play a C scale. Don't look at my hands if you're on ukulele. Look at you look at your hands, right? Baritone players, you're looking at your sheet music and feeling the beauty coming out of your fingers. Grab your C scale from the top. Both instruments. One, two, ready, play. C, D, E.
started counting the numbers again, uh, uh, letters. Numbers, letters. I don't know what I was counting. I was doing it wrong. Let's start from the top. Ready? One more time. Together, ukulele and baritone. One, two, ready, play. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, B, A, G, F, E, D, C. All right. I'm going to switch instruments. If you're on baritone, stay on baritone, obviously. All right. Okay. Same thing. Key of C scale from the top and then back down the bottom. Ready? One, two, ready, play. C, D, E, F, G, A, D, C, B, A, G, F, How do I how do I put this gently? Um, in the musical world, scales are kind of a big deal um, because they are useful on some instruments to help you increase your speed, confidence, um, help you understand a little bit about music theory. I have found that not to be the case very much on ukulele. I don't think if you get really fast at scales that you're magically going to be really fast at uh, playing songs. So I don't think that's really particularly great motivation to have you do it. Um, uh, the other thing that I find with scales is that well, some of you had piano lessons and you, for some reason, <laughs> uh, the, the only thing you took away from that was that your teacher was mean because you didn't like to play scales. And, um, I got, I came to piano as a much older student, too old. And, um, we never worked on scales very much because we just played songs, right? We just played songs. Um, and then when I decided I'm going to get serious about piano, I'm going to get really good at, um, I was able to play scales without really very much difficulty. I had to learn the specific fingering, but outside of that, it was just, just a different type of song. So I don't want you to get the notion that you need to know how to play scales in order to play songs. Okay. We're going to work on songs and by that you're magically also going to learn where all your notes are. Um, uh, and, uh, so, so, so don't think that oh, it, like this, if you have prior music knowledge that these scales are going to be super important in your life. They're really not. <laughs> okay? Want you to know what they are. Want you to know where they are. I feel like it's my music te music teacher job to at least show you what a C scale looks like. But we really will not spend that much time on it. Um, all you have to do is play "Joy to the World, the Lord Has Come," and you played a C scale. And um, so why why wouldn't you play that instead of a C scale? Is my question. Um, so the other thing that comes up, guys, and this is just a, a piece of information for you. Um, we use scales sometimes to warm up. I think playing your make a better bar will be a much better warm up for you than playing a scale. Um, I think um, it's a way to get you where you're really focused in on tonality so that you're making sure your fingers are placed well. It's also another, it's a helpful tool in making sure your notes are equally spaced. You don't want to play C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Well, you don't want to be doing that. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, B, A, G, F, E, D, C. Right, to do that nice and steady. Um, the other thing, like, in my guitar lessons, we do the opposite. We don't. We don't want it to be steady. We'll maybe we'll uh, um, uh, syncopate them. C D E F G A B C B A G F E D C. Right. So we'll try to make them all different, but equally different as you go up and down. Um, so you can mess around with that just a little bit and see what it is. Um, and I wrote in this paper, it's the C scale is the most important scale on ukulele. Really, that's probably overstating it. I would say there's probably none of the scales that are super important because you're really, it, it, I give this out to people who feel like, man, I have to know this. Now, um, what you need to actually know in here, you really do need to know what the piano keyboard is, right? You really do need to know C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, uh, and you need to know where the black notes are. So you need to know that above C is a black note, above D is a black note. There's no black note above F, 
F has a black node, G has a black node, A has a black node, and there's no black node above B. So that part you do need to know because that's going to come up when we start doing bar chords up and down the neck. When I say, oh, we're going to do a, a C chord on two, well, that's a D, right? On four, which you guys have already done today, that's an E, and here it's an F. And you and that part was going to be important for you to know. So I would take a little bit of time. Even look at the if you're never in, in learned any piano at all and have no idea what you're looking at. Look at the baritone marking. Uh, the baritone page has all of the key note, all of the um, notes written out on it. C D E F G A B C C D E F D A B C D E F G A B C. And you can look at the pattern of the black notes against the white notes, and you'll see a C always shows up just to the left of the two black keys, right? And the F always shows up just to the left of the three black keys. And so that pattern repeats over and over and over from the bottom of the piano all the way up to the top. It also is repeating on your instrument, but it's much harder to see because all of your notes are brown, right? <laughs> Every single one. And so those notes are all here. They're just arranged all crazy, and they're kind of hard to, to, to really picture what they look like. Um, and so that's why that piano keyboard is important to, to memorize. Now, what you do not have to memorize, but there are enough of students that I get who feel like this is the most important thing, um, and it's really not, is where those, the names of the notes on your fretboard. So I happen to know this is an A string, right? So if I move up two, it's gonna be a B. If I move up one more, it's a C. If I move up two more, it's a D. If I move up to here, it's an E. There's an F right here. Um, and here's a G, and here's another A, okay? So I happen to know that because I know what the piano keyboard is. I know where the sharps and flats are. I've memorized that, and so I can pick out my notes here. I could also take time to memorize them using the little fretboard layout that I have. Now here's where it gets into a mess, right? Ukulele, those are your notes. They're all memorized. Uh, you get them all memorized. Then you pick up a baritone. Well, guess what? All those notes are in a different spot. And so then you have to also learn the baritone fretboard. Uh, and then when you pick up a guitar, then you'll be two or more strings. You've got to memorize where those notes are. And so there's this obsession with needing to name the notes on your fretboard. I don't subscribe to that notion. I don't believe it is necessary. There will be a handful of notes that you will really learn to, to know that, hey, that's the C note here. That's going to show up. All right? You're going to get where you really know that note. This open C here, you're going to get to know that. But overall, we generally speaking don't need to know that information because very few ukulele players are going to play from only from standard notation. Um, and the reason we don't is it's an inferior system on this instrument to tablature. Okay, and what really is going to matter is shape. So when I teach, when we talk about A shape, which we did last week, um, we're then going to turn this into a B flat. We're going to put a bar there, and we're going to take that shape, move it up. All right. So I'm still making this A shape, but I'm making it up here on five. That shape is going to become incredibly important to you as we start moving in more complicated step up the fretboard. Knowing what the shape is is more important than knowing what the names of the notes are and until you're actually composing and arranging um, I don't see a ton of reason for you to memorize that and for most people well I've taught thousands of people and about seven <laughs> have become composers right yeah. so um, it, it it's pretty rare for people to get to the point where they're like yep I am going to compose high level music on the ukulele or on the baritone and I need to have all my notes memorized you really don't um, especially with modern software where you type in the stuff that you need to type in either in tablature or on this on the treble clef line the, the sheet music this the, the software magically fix it converts all that for you so um, um, you probably need to know enough to double check that the software is doing it right but in, in general generally speaking you don't need to know that so here's what you need to know one you need to know what the, how the piano keyboard works you will need to know that you really will um, the other thing you need to know is how to do a C scale and so I'd like to do one one more time um, I'm going to do the on the ukulele and then we'll do it on baritone and then guys we're done for the day okay this this is one of those shorter lessons where you're like huh 
I don't know. He just basically told us we don't have to do this. <laughs> okay. Um, and then tomorrow we'll, 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 be, we'll be back to strumming for just a little bit. But I do like, the reason I like this is that everybody, you feel like you need to have some, some sort of a scale in your life so that people know you're taking this serious, right? And so you say, hey, let, let me show you what a C scale looks like. And let's do it. Ready? Play. O, two, O, one, three. Done it for baritone players. Let's do it by notes. Ready, go. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, B, A, G, F, E, D, C. And as I was playing that, I was just like, oh wait, I need to talk about the sharps. Okay, so your black keys, which is the pentatonic scale, um, is hiding out inside of here. If I look at the piano keyboard, and with first in middle C is this C, the next note's a sharp, right? It's got that black key. Well, that's this note right here, but we don't play it in a C major scale because uh, it sounds funny, right? It doesn't sound good, but the D sounds good, and that's the next note over on the piano and the next fret over on your fretboard, okay? Next note's in a D sharp or an E flat here. Again, we don't play it in a C major scale because it sounds off. And um, I'm getting you ready for the state test, Ross. <laughs> yeah. This is one of those things where, you know, uh, uh, because there's this mania around testing because, uh, you know, we're all accountable these days. Um, um, we used to do this when I was a high school teacher. We had this state, they had state exams were a new thing. And one of the things on there was how to write an essay. And then they had to write an essay. And we taught them this absolutely mind numbing uh, uh, intro. Uh, three sections, out, outro, basically, um, and we told them what to write in each sec session. So first, blah, 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 blah. Second, blah, 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 blah. Third, blah, 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 blah. In conclusion, blah, 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 blah. And we would teach them that to pass the 10th grade test, right? And so they would all go, they'd pass the 10th grade test, and then they'd come back in 11th grade, and then my job was to unteach them <laughs> How to write like that? I said uh, the first. I remember the first year. In, uh, the first year I was teaching eleventh grade. Uh, I said, "All right, we're going to write an essay on whatever it was," and they all turned in their papers. And I, I think it, if I remember right, I had well, I was there was a lot. I think I was teaching two sections of eleventh grade, so that's sixty kids. And if I remember right, fifty-eight of them. The second sentence began. The word was first, right? Because we had taught them that how to pass the test. <laughs> And I said, guys, uh, right now in 11th grade, let's make a commitment that you will never, ever, 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 ever begin the second, se the, the, the first sentence of the second paragraph with the word first. In fact, you'll never use the word first, second, or third ever in an, in an essay ever again. And of course, about half of them heard it and were like, oh, you mean we can really write now? And the others were like, please don't take our form away. That really works. <laughs> um, I, nah, sorry, Rob got me off. Um, all of your black notes are still in here. Notice like on the second string, you play an E, which on the piano keyboard, the next note, there is no black note, so look what you press down, F. Okay, we don't skip a fret. The next note's an F sharp, so we have to skip that, and then we play G. So the black notes are on here too, but we're not playing them in this key. If we get to key of G, key of D, key of F, and so on, sometimes we'll use some of those black notes, but when we're playing in the key of C, we only use the white notes. And um, so they're still here. We're just skipping a fret in order to, to skip the black notes, okay? Um, and again, uh, so what we've learned here today, let's make sure we know what we're doing. One, how to play a C scale. Okay, on, on ukulele and on baritone. But, and baritones, you've also learned your D scale and your G scale. You guys get extra scales primarily because you can do them. And also you guys are more, much more likely to need to um, 
transpose stuff uh, when you go to a ukulele gathering. Uh, they will have stuff for ukulele players and as baritone players you're probably going to be stuck on chords and you're going to need to be a little bit more in tune with how music works uh, than a ukulele player typically is so that you will be able to keep up uh, because they're not going to they're not going to have anything to help you there. You're going to have to just walk in knowing. Uh, second, re second thing you've learned is uh, what the piano keyboard layout looks like and so again I do recommend you memorize from C to C where the black notes show up and then um, we've also been working on making sure you're using index on one middle on two ring on three and uh, baritones you did have one scale where your four show up and you're going to use your pinky that's called first position because your first finger is in first fret first position second position third position and so on um, and then we've also learned that you probably don't need to stress out about this stuff. This is we're going to learn all this. This stuff's all going to happen as we're playing songs. I do want you to be able to play a C scale, um, but I, more importantly, I want you to be able to take a piece of music and turn it into a song. And um, the stuff you learn from playing a C scale is helpful, but it's not necessarily going to to. Um, uh, it's not going to make you a great player. <laughs> um, uh, there is uh, on guitar we have a guy named Segovia, and he is revered as the greatest teacher and greatest guitarist uh, that we are supposed to study. Uh, and his scale recommendation is: I recommend you spend two hours a day playing scales, and I spend about three minutes on scales. <laughs> um, and so clearly, I'm not as good as Segovia, but he recommends two hours a day. How about that? So that's crazy. Um, that may not be crazy. Maybe if you want to get somewhere, you got to do that. But I, I'm not going. I don't want to get wherever that takes me. Apparently, uh, baritone players, let's play your C scale one more time. Um, and ukulele players, you can play with me. Here we go. One, two, ready, play. C D. Baritone player, it's not a bad idea to practice your other scales. Your D scale and your G scale. Okay, so there you go. There's, there's your chance to uh, um, um, have extra scales, baritone players. You get more than the ukulele players get. And again, baritone players, um, I wouldn't spend a ton of time memorizing where all your notes are on the fretboard. It's really, really not necessary. <laughs> and uh, we have tablature. We don't need that stuff. So that's what I know about the scales today. Um, and mostly meant for those of you guys that have had a little bit of previous uh, background in one of the other instruments to sort of uh, deprogram you just a tiny bit. Um, knowing a scale is important. Knowing every single, single thing about and practicing them all the time, none of that's important. Um, but we do want you to learn the piano fretboard um, because it does I inform you when you're getting ready to do chords and positioning. So uh, that's what we needed to know. Now, tomorrow, um, last week we strummed in the key of A, dun, 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 out of this little book. Tomorrow we're going to be strumming in the key of uh, C. So we're going to take this, instead of playing an A here, we'll play a C. Instead of playing an F sharp minor here, we'll play an A minor. Instead of a D, we'll play a C. And instead of a, a, a I'm sorry, an F. <laughs> and instead of an E7, we'll play a G7, or G or G7. Um, and so tomorrow, the class that we're, you're going to take tomorrow is the class you would take if you go to Hawaii and you're in the hotel and they say, hey, we're giving free ukulele lessons in the lobby. And you're like, sweet, I'm going to go take that. And you go down there. They're going to teach you C chord, F chord, and G7. And then you're going to play some songs. And so that's the class you're going to be in tomorrow. The reason I wait until the 12th lesson to talk about that is because it's actually way harder to do than playing in the key of A uh, for new people. And... Um, by the time we get there, hopefully you've got enough around your ukulele where it's actually going to mean something. You're going to be able to put it together and turn it into a thing. Um, so tomorrow, come, uh, we will be at one more day on heavy on chords, and then um, on uh, Wednesday, 
tomorrow's Tuesday, Wednesday, uh, we're going to take your chords, we're going to take melody, we're going to smash them together, we're going to bring you into the tough uke world, into the uh, uh, chord melody or finger style world, uh, from which you will never escape. And so uh, when we start on My Spaghetti Monster, uh, it and Three Blind Mice are the two most important pieces of music that we have for bringing chords and melody together and helping you understand what that's going to look and sound like. So we have a good week ahead, good solid music for everybody, um, and uh, we will proceed accordingly. And I hope you guys have a wonderful day. I will mention quickly, um, today over in this next hour, we're playing... Um, uh, two cowboy songs that are not very difficult <laughs> and both of them used to be in the intro class so uh we're playing down in the valley um and uh, i've been working on the railroad i used to teach both of those in intro class and then i realized they were just kind of repetitive and not necessary um so uh if you have nothing to do in the next hour come hang out and and play those two songs with us um, both of them are quite playable and uh you'll have fun with that uh tomorrow those guys get a new arpeggio you guys haven't done arpeggios yet we'll get to it uh and then they're doing yeah some of you will remember marty robbins and his song el paso uh it's 10 verses <laughs> i just finished writing in all the lyrics this morning and i want to kill myself so all right guys have a wonderful day i'll see all of you tomorrow and um or i'll see you in the next hour and uh, remember uh, those of you in orchestra um tonight um uh, we'll dive into orchestra again um, we have a ton of jazz tunes over there to be in orchestra you have to be a member of the jolly roger website and if you're not go take a look at that um and get signed up it's it's five bucks to check it out and then it's 25 dollars every 90 days um and uh, you get access to all of the songs we've ever done plus you also um, get access to all the orchestra music which is hard music it's definitely hard music uh, but it, you know it gives you uh, some stuff to be uh, stretching toward and so I'd love to see you there um, and that's it so have a wonderful afternoon and I will talk to you all later Vic thank you Rob brought short lesson for y'all <laughs> Rob <laughs> Jan thank you I never learned piano music there you go, Jan. Feel very smart, right? <laughs> yeah, piano notation is really valuable, but uh, 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 but it's not as valuable as people will tell you. So there you go. Linda, all right, see you in a few. Sounds great. Michelle, you are welcome. Uh, guys, have a wonderful afternoon. I'm going to pull the plug. <laughs>